a quick yeah just a quick voice check here let's see if you guys can hear me i hope everything is all right on my end loud and clear that's lovely all right lovely lovely to be your host today we are sitting here at some sort of an anniversary i'd say it's the 10th town hall that we do have here in this community and it's lovely to be here and to just talk to you and express to you what's going on what's brewing in this com community and what is going on in general we do have a couple of hot topics today uh, especially last week was kind of a bummer for the privacy section all around bitcoin we've seen a couple of companies going to court and a couple of individuals going to court because of yeah people think like being private is not good and a couple of other people want to know what you're doing all right nevertheless let's start into today's session we do want to talk about a couple of new things that are brewing in this community and we do want to talk about what's going on in the bitcoin space in general today i'll try to invite scott and ben i do see ben is not currently in the audience here but scott if you if you don't mind uh, I, i'd love to get you on the stage right away and uh yeah hey scott Alrighty, let me see. I quickly need to check something on my audio. Just a second. Can you say something again, please, for me? Hello, hello. Perfect. Now it works for me. That's brilliant. Alrighty. So, uh, today we do have something to talk about, I, I think, uh, that you may want to kind of present to the community or at least talk a little bit about what's going on. Um, the stage is yours. Wow. Okay. What's up, everyone? Um, I think what uh, you're referring to was the um, the Bidax Supra 402, which is uh, the latest revision of the Bidax Supra. Is like um, it's the design is done um i need to order pcbs and test it out uh but basically this is the next revision of the uh bit axe based on the chip from the s21 that's the 1368 uh we have incorporated a bunch of uh bug fixes designed for manufacturing improvements um and and generally feedback from people who are running these and then uh a couple added features this time around. Um, we've got the, uh, it's the TPS 546D24A. This time that's the, um, that's the voltage regulator that steps the five volt input down to around 1.2 volts for the ASIC. Um, that's gonna be new on this one. It's, it's a cool part that um, K1 first, uh, well, I guess told us all about. And then um, Mac Fighter did a bunch of work to incorporate it into the Bidax Hex, and it, it seems to be working pretty well. So we're going to switch the Bidax over to that. Um, I think that will it will it, it has the opportunity to provide quite a bit more current to the miners. So I think that's going to be beneficial for us going forward. Um, it also has built-in current monitoring and uh, output voltage adjustment over I squared C. So that will allow us to get rid of a couple parts that were on the um, the bit axe previously. That's the DS4432U, which was the it's uh, the chip that. Allowed Those can go away, uh, which will make you know hopefully cost savings, simpler design. Um, the cool thing about this new voltage regulator, another cool thing about it, uh, um, is it has integrated MOSFETs, so we don't have to worry about uh, soldering those down anymore. They're built into the to the chip. The chip itself is is bigger, but um, that might be kind of nice because it has bigger pins, so it might be a little bit easier to solder than the infamous U9, which is the TPS four zero three zero five from before. So yeah, I think this is gonna be pretty cool. Um, if if you're feeling adventurous, you could go ahead and order it. Uh, all the design files are up on the um, the Bidax hardware repo. I added uh, the Gerbers and everything. 
Uh, we do have a question from the chat. Crypto Ice is asking bit a bigger surface for immersion heatsink. Question. Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, yeah, it, it's the the top of the uh, TPS five four six D twenty four A is quite a bit bigger than before. So, and it's all like the same height as opposed to the the discrete. Uh, MOSFETs we had before, so yeah, you can you can stick a heat sink on the top of it. We've actually done that on the um, on the Bitax Hex, and it does seem to it does seem to work. Also, this chip is rated for like a hundred degrees C. Um, oh, that's pretty. And it has internal it has internal temperature monitoring on the voltage regulator too, which is kind of slick. So we can you can kind of adjust things. Um, I don't know what the max. The max wattage is. Um, uh, by the way, speaking about the current design changes, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, is on the 402 version this copper part on the backside of the PCB as well, where you can place another heatsink, or was this another prototype? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, what I've been wanting to try this. Uh, this is the way that the. Um, the hash boards, the, the Antminer hash boards do it is they actually have a spot to solder a heat sink to the PCB on the back side of where the ASIC is mounted. And I've kind of always wanted to try that. So I added a spot um, on the back of the bit axe. Um, I don't know how to share this picture, but... Um, we will try to yeah, post there's, there's, this in the, in the chat. But what, what do you think will be the benefit of having another heat sink of the back end of the PCB? So we don't know for sure, but I, I think that the majority of the heat from the ASIC uh, is rated at the top of the chip, but there, there's a non-zero percentage of it that comes out the back, like through the power uh, pads into the PCB. And we've kind of seen this, uh, some of the people that are overclocking bit axes have been putting a heat sink onto the capacitor that we, that big capacitor that we have on the back side of, uh, of the ASIC now. Um, so that that capacitor is not going to get hot on its own. It's it's actually being heated up by the chip, the ASIC chip that's on the other side of it. So um, I've I've moved that all aside, and now there's just a big uh, copper exposed copper pad on the back there that you could solder a heat sink to, or or you could um, you know use heat sink thermal compound and stick it on there. Uh, it would we'll screw around with it and see how it works. Uh, I sized it for. The heat sinks I have on hand, which are the um, the S17, the big heat sinks from the S17, so those should hopefully solder on there. We can see how it how it works. Um, to answer uh, Crypto Ice's question there about Max W, I assume you mean the the power. Um, I think I think I set it up to be uh, 20 amps at 1.2 volts, so um, that should. Well, that's brilliant. That's plenty, plenty of footage that you could put into it. Twenty-four watts. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's obviously like totally overkill for a single ASIC. But um, you know, I'll just hint at some future projects that are coming out. But you know, this this does sort of. Well, we'll use this. We use this voltage regulator on the hex, so it's certainly it's capable of controlling. Uh, of powering six chips, um, and so maybe in the future we'll have bit axes with, uh, you know, maybe a couple chips, maybe two, three. We'll see, but this kind of opens the door for that. Oh, that's brilliant! Why do you mention it already? Um, I do think the audience, and especially everybody who's listening to this later on, might be interested into getting an idea of what's going on with the BitX hacks. Plenty of people are already waiting for it. And uh, as always, I do tend to tell the people, all right, there's something going on. A couple of minor bug fixes are still in there. And we are looking for people to help us, especially help to grow the community and to yeah, just be faster on all these progress that we do. Would you mind quickly sharing with us a couple of these minor bug fixes that we still need to do in order to basically release the first operational working version of the BitX hacks? Well, I mean, in short, the BitX Hex is working. Um, I think you have one on your desk that's working. I have one on my desk that's working. Um, so it, it generally works. There's a couple, um, 
you know, if you built a, the previous version was the 302. If you build a 302, there was kind of like a bunch of, they're called strapping resistors, sort of these configuration resistors for the uh, power supply that needed to be changed and stuff. And that wasn't really like reflected in the bomb and the, um, the schematic. So we, we've kind of incorporated all of those things in 302 that were a little bit uncertain and uh, that's become 303 uh ben has made a couple 303s uh for the people who are working on this project and got them out there and there was a couple of them that uh it didn't seem to be immediately be working when they got built so what kind of remains to do right now is this is what mech fighter mentioned in the hex channel as yield problems we got to figure out like why uh those ones they got built aren't working um Obviously, the hex is a significantly more complicated board than the bit X, so uh, there's just a bunch more things to check out. Uh, but it's it's really close. Um, I think there's a couple people who are are getting ready to start manufacturing these, right? And I think they're they're kind of just waiting for that, like, okay, all clear, like, you know, everything in the repo looks good, um, everything in the firmware looks good, like, go ahead and do it. And I think. That's coming. We're 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 real real close to uh, saying that. So, you know, if again, if you're if you're following along and want to build this, and I guess several people have. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, grab grab three hundred three and uh, and build it. Um, I mean, what I could know. what I could say from my end is. Um, for those of you who might know, I'm, I'm German, and uh, there's a, a German BitX group. <laughs> it's quite funny. And they do tend to share plenty of things. And some of them already got started on trying trying to tinker around a little bit with these BitX hex releases that we do have seen there. And a couple of these people are actually trying to hand solder the BitX hex, which is ridiculous to me, because I've done once the BitX ultra assembly all these components these uh, 0402 components or 0405 I, I think and they're so tiny and uh, I can't imagine what kind of hurdle you're facing if you're trying to do this on your own by hand trying to actually place all these ICs on a bit XX board I mean I've, I've seen I've seen a couple of pictures now in these telegram groups that do exist um, obviously none of these telegram groups is official or anything else but it's it's also a driving factor of this community i mean we're not we're not only sticking to this discord everybody could do their own kind of community if they wish to it's completely fine but it's lovely to see that a couple of people are already getting into this and trying to tinker around with this as you said like just order these boards and try it on your own it's theoretically working yeah yeah i mean it it's beyond theoretically working it is it is working um there's still, you know, lacking documentation and obviously lacking a store where you can just go and buy it. But don't let don't let that stop you. Um, for those of you who are, who are around in the early days of the bid axe, it was also very similar boat of like, where can I buy this? Uh, no, nowhere. You just can build it yourself if you want. And you know, like Wont Clue said, it's the just by the nature of the of the complexity there's a lot more components like there's a lot um so it's plenty it's a yeah. time consuming build by hand I, I did one by hand but i don't know if i'd want to do that um i probably don't want to do that again there, there's a lot of for two uh you know small components um it's a little bit of a trade-off with those small components because yeah they, they kind of stuck to assemble by hand but they're massively cheaper and um if you're not uh, assembling it by hand they're they're kind of better because they uh you know pick and place doesn't really care i mean just to give these people that are listening to this a rough idea a couple of months ago i was doing a live stream about how to solder the big X ultra all components by hand and to be fair my knowledge back then was a little bit less than what it is today but it took over four hours just to do one big X ultra <laughs> And it wasn't even finished. I at some point I just needed to break up the live stream because it was way too stressful, and I was so exhausted by then. And uh, I mean, 
the theoretically or if you if you take a look on the bitx hex board it is six times more complicated and it does have plenty more components than an ultra so it does take a little bit more time and i i mean i'd say if you do try to tend to try it on your own it's probably more of like a weekend or maybe two weekend project than you're just sitting down and try to do it yeah yeah i think that's right i think that's right but you know i've seen some people do some pretty amazing stuff so um i don't know fuck around and find out you can do it yeah um there, there's a couple other questions yeah we do have a question uh, from unknown eddie uh who's asking can you give us an update on how bitcoin is going so for those of you who don't know bitcoin is basically a replacement board for these control boards of the and minor hash boards so you do have hash boards and control boards and the bitcoin tries to solve the issue of replacing this proprietary hardware that is controlling all these hash boards where these chips sit on and yeah the question is any updates on the bitcoin so the the bitcoin is um we i just uh built up a couple uh v 2.2 boards um and they appear to be working um mm -hmm. the, there was an issue with fan control before uh that's fixed there's one small thing that needs to be changed and that is um pull-ups to five volts so some fans some 12 volt fans require the pwm the, the speed control signal to be um pulled up to five volts uh i tested the ones i have here off of my k pro and they did not require that so that my k pro fans worked just fine with the bit crane as it is but uh k1 was telling me that not all fans are capable of that and so to be more universal we should pull it up to five volts so there's going to be one more small rev of the bit crane that will have the fan speed um, signals pulled up to five volts and so that'll be v2.3 i've actually um done all of that i laid i you know changed the schematic changed the board um and that's all up on github in the bitcrane repository if you want to if you want to build one and those boards unlike the hex building the bitcrane boards is easy peasy it's got all 0603 components like yeah you can totally build it it's not even it doesn't even have that many components um so yeah if, if actually if you're looking for like a a soldering project that to practice on the Bitcrane is fantastic. Um, that said, it's also super uh, simple. So I'm going to set it up with the JLC PCB uh, part numbers so that you can just order it um, from JLC PCB and have them do the all the uh, PCBA. And then you can just, you know, get it from them uh, and not worry about it. I will say that um, hardware-wise, it's looking good. Firmware-wise, like there's a ton of work to be done. Uh, like if you want to just drop this thing in and have it control uh, an S19. So, if you're thinking about building a bit crane, um, just be aware that you're going to have to do uh, the software. Uh, here's the question: When can we expect the software for S21 for bit crane? Uh, I, it will be ready as soon as you write it. Um, so <laughs> I guess you just ask yourself, look, look within for that, uh, for when that can be ready. Um, I right, mean, this I know is, that this is kind of to, to get, to just jump into this. Is this also kind of like a shout out to everybody who's listening to this later on, or even right now, if you have any knowledge in this kind of spectrum, why not try to, to get into this community and try to. I don't know, like share a little bit of your knowledge and maybe you do find a project that you love and that you would like to contribute to would be awesome. Totally. And actually, Bitcrane is also um, a good entry point into writing firmware for miners because unlike the Bitax, um, it's, you can do it in whatever programming language you want. You could do it in Python, you could do it in, I don't know, Go or C or... I mean, the, I the current know. implementation kind of relies on the Pi miner, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was going to say that there's there's a couple people uh, who have gotten uh, Bitcrane working with an S19K Pro, mm -hmm. and they uh, used Pi miner. And I believe the changes to make it work are checked into um, 
Pmax UW's uh, Pi Minor repo. I can post the link to that. Uh, so you can you can base your stuff on that if you want to roll with Python. Python's pretty chill programming, but I just you know it's it's a good way to get involved and and try it out. Uh, there's still a ton to be done, so. If you want to make meaningful contribu contributions, you can do that with Bitcrane, and yeah, it'd be fantastic. I, I think the, at least in my mind, the Bitcrane is is just a, a side project. I was I was listening to some people talk on a podcast, and I was like, oh my gosh, like we've done so much of this work for the Bitax, like. I could just make this thing, and so it's been, it's been this side project that just uh, keeps sort of plodding along, um, and doesn't have like a whole lot of eyes on it. But uh, I still think it could be pretty cool. Like, you could do a lot of of neat stuff with it, and I, I really think that open source firmware for S19 series miners is like. We, we just got to have it someday. So hopefully this hardware can enable that development from someone. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I do, I do have so, if I do remember it correctly, I, I, I had so many interesting talks with people who are then using Antwino hardware and they're complaining about the software and how bad it is behaving. And I'm, I'm always like in this position of thinking, yeah, we, we could totally fix it. <laughs> And sure, we could. It's just a matter of time and a matter of people and people that are contributing to this. So, yeah, I, I can't say this often enough. We need more people who are trying to get involved in things, not for only the greater good, but also maybe if you do want to level up your own skills. I mean, it's probably a good idea to have this on your resume. Just saying, just saying. I mean, I'm not sure about it, but uh, imagine, like, you can tell your new boss like I'm a open source developer he will probably freak out I would be right yeah I mean this is this is a uh, a cool field that's moving fast and seeing a lot of development I mean and as Bitcoin sees more and more success uh, I think all these projects will too so if you're even remotely interested in screwing around with it um, I think the Bitcrane is, is a good way to, to fuck around. It's not expensive. It's easy to make. It's There's plenty to do. There used to be a lot of excitement for it. So, uh, yeah, do it. I, I'd be happy to answer questions in the in the um, the Bitcrane channel, too, if people have specific questions about that. Um, but, yeah, just be aware that the software support is very minimal at this time. We're getting there, we're getting there. We do have another question from Dagger Nabbit. Um, I'm hoping that I do pronounce this name correctly. Uh, where can we source the S21 chips? So as far as I'm aware of, there are no official sources where you can currently strip them or get them. What I do know, for example, Decentral, when you do order a BitX over there, a BitX Supra from them with these S21 chips, what they do is they do order these S21 ASICs and then they just strip each ASIC off of the board and place it onto their Supra. So that's one way of sourcing an S21 chip. I'm not sure, and maybe Scott, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but uh, I'm not sure if there is any reseller in China or somewhere else that is currently actually sourcing S21 chips. I think that the, the Chinese sellers of like new unused chips for the S21, that's the uh, BM1368, uh, they're starting to come online. Like I've seen a couple of them here and there um, available, but it seems early because the prices are really bad. Uh, like really, really bad. Um, like over thirty dollars for a single Oof. one of them, which is yeah. is not good. Um, I did see a comment uh, in the OSMU chat from nine nine seven, and he said that he talked to a supplier in China, and they were offering him the thirteen sixty eight for the same price as the thirteen sixty six. So he didn't he didn't give his source, but uh, I guess I guess anything's possible. So you know. Talk to the, the Chinese chip suppliers, the usual sources like NBTC, um, and there, there's several other. If you look around on AliExpress, you can pretty quickly identify who sells these chips. Um, and even if they don't list them, 
on AliExpress. You can you can message them and talk to them and, and see what you can find. Um, it's it's not clear yet uh, what who the like main source is. And I've also heard that these miners, like the S twenty ones or any of these ant miners, they usually ship with a six month warranty, and so it would make sense that the chip for the repair market have not spun up yet because these just came out in January. So everyone's still under warranty. So if their machine breaks, they send it back to Bitmain hmm. to fix. Interesting. But that said, there are authorized um, Bitmain repair, like warranty repair centers kind of all around the world. And those people are going to need chips. Um, so I, I would assume that this market is going to get spun up uh, sooner rather than later. And we should be in a position, hopefully, soon to be able to just buy these chips at a reasonable price and but yeah and just for those right of you now right sorry go sorry, ahead go <laughs> all right let me let me, let me quickly be, dive right in now, here like no nah, no nah, let me quickly dive in here i'm sorry so for those of you who might be wondering and might be from the european market if you do take a look on the uh github repository from scott the bidx repository you do find a link to mbdc and uh, what I'm trying to make you aware of is if you are from Germany, or Austria or any other country that is mm, next located to Germany, uh, you might not be able to find the sources on AliExpress or anything else. Uh, the reason for that is being that a couple of companies have been shadow banned from this, these European countries. I'm not aware why, but it is what it is just saying. So maybe you need to use a VPN in order to access their shops or otherwise just try to guide yourself directly to the MBTC shop. Have you been able to get to the MBTC shop directly uh, from Germany? Just just directly. Over AliExpress, it's impossible. It's AliExpress shadow banned like a couple percent of their whole market to Germany. So I don't know why, but it is pretty limited. AliExpress is not that what it has been a couple of years later uh, before that. All right, I just posted the link to NBC, NBTC directly. That's nbtcminer.com. So, um, yeah, if you're in a part of the world that doesn't seem to want to play ball with AliExpress, uh, at least NBTC, you can hit them up directly. And I'm seeing now, actually, I just clicked on it, and NBTC seems to have on their front page all sorts of Antminer S21 repair parts. So maybe things are starting to happen i mean things that move pretty awesome. fast oh yeah i see actually they have the 1368 for sale but they are they are 35 dollars each oh yeah that's kind of expensive not good. that's real expensive so there's um I think you can get an S21, like a complete S21 for around $4,000 right now. And there are 324 chips in it. So that's $12.34 if you don't mind unsoldering them all. Oof. I mean, it's kind of interesting. So the price point is kind of the same as for the Antminer S19 Plus and Pro version, which is kind of weird. the uh the price point for the chips yeah yeah take a look on the bm1398 ac this is the ASIC from the s19 pro and s19 plus it's basically 30 bucks as well it's interesting oh on from nbtc hmm but a good yeah. point is and maybe someone from this community or who's listening to this later on uh, they also seem to offer the what's miner chips. So maybe some of you want to create a what's eggs. Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, you can get lots of what's miner chips on AliExpress and I guess from NBTC. So um, yeah, these are really bad prices for the 1366. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on there with that. Highly recommended product BitX Ultra. Are they selling the BitX Ultra? Oh my goodness, they do. They do offer BitX Do It Yourself Kit. Uh, what? Interesting. So MBTC is starting to get into the BitX market. <laughs> Interesting. 
Uh, let, let me take a look on this one. Standalone can work directly to your pool Wi-Fi, no external computer needed. Brilliant. Let's see if they, they did not mention our GitHub, do they? So wait, this is a kit. Yeah. So what's in, what is in there? If I do see this correctly, it's only the ASIC. Because it's uh, rated from $1.50 to $14.99. Yeah. Uh, oh, interesting. So they do offer you a couple of different components. The BM1366AL, the BM1397AG, so the old one from the S17. They do offer you the OLED screen, the heat and fan, uh, heat sink and fan, uh, the DS4432U+, Plus, and a couple of other components. So they just offer you a couple That's of components. Funny. So they're just selling all the sort of main ICs yeah. from the BIDX separately. They, interesting. That's kind of funny. But it does it does look like they're selling in packs of five. You can get the BM1366 for $15. So that's, that's less terrible. Add to card. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, $15 per... BM 1366 is not that bad. It's a starting point, I'd say. Yeah, it's a starting point. I mean, obviously with all these things, if you buy more of them, you can get them cheaper. Huh, that's funny. Well, you know, they're, <laughs> they're paying attention. Oh, they sell the OLED, they sell... That's so funny. Yeah. They're they're paying attention. That's yeah. So uh, for five cool. chips, you're sitting at seventy five bucks. It's not bad. Okay. It's okay. All right. Uh, so let's let's move forward. Let's see what other topics we do have. Uh, Scott, have you recently heard about this uh, complete privacy thinging that kind of blew up the X and other social media f platforms? Yeah, I mean the last, the last week, I guess it was, or is it in two weeks now? I don't know. It feels like an eternity, but there's been all sorts of privacy things. I believe, kind of got kicked off with the arrest of the two of two developers that worked on Samurai Wallet, um, and they were charged with conspiracy to um, commit uh, to to conspiracy to launder money and to operate a money laundering operation which is it is it's totally bullshit um uh, because so samurai let, wallet, let's quickly let's quickly dive yeah, into okay. this here so for those of you who might not know what this is so the samurai wallet is basically a yeah wallet that seeks into privacy and they do have a feature that's called coin join and i don't want to technically dive into this but basically what you could think about is uh, you do share a couple of bitcoin transaction inputs and then the outputs are not allocated or cannot be redirected to your input so you are putting something in some sort of a pool and uh, something is mixing in there and then your transaction is going out of this pool to your destination address where you want this to be so then there's no linkage between the new address and the old address just to keep it at the bare minimum of what they're what they implemented and what's possible or what was possible with them so let's go ahead on that operating a money transmitting business was the other charge yeah yeah it's uh it seems like a stretch i mean not to justify it at all but i know that with these things they always throw like as many charges kind of at them as they possibly can to see what sticks and there's apparently no penalty for charging someone uh incorrectly um I feel like if there was, then this could be much more reasonable. But yeah, it, it's it's real it's real uh, unfortunate. And so you know, this happened. This this uh, I think one of the guys was in Spain or something like that. One of the guys was in the U.S., but they they both got arrested by U.S. authorities. Um, and this caused um, Phoenix Wallet, which is a French company, to shut down and remove their app from the app stores, the mobile app stores in the US. Um, and, and I think disallow use of their lightning service uh, in the US, uh, which is too bad because Phoenix Wallet was badass. I, I definitely liked that one. Um, 
and then I think um, Wasabi Wallet, which is, I actually don't know where they're based, but Wasabi Wallet was another uh, wallet that was kind of in the same vein. I don't really know the details of Wasabi Wallet, but it seems like it was kind of in the same vein as uh, Phoenix and maybe even uh, Samurai Wallet, but they also stopped operating, uh, offering services to US customers. And so, and then I think the FBI also sent out some kind of like warning to people about using these money transmitting services. And it was just kind of, it seemed like a coordinated attack, but I think two people got arrested and a lot of other people got really scared and stopped operating in the US. And so it, it sucks, right? This is, you know, I mean, we don't want to drive. We don't want to drive any conspiracy theory here, but it's it's kind of interesting how the government and these agencies uh, do have an issue with your privacy, right? Certainly, yeah. I mean, it's super hypocritical, right, of them to be like, you know, this service is uh, a money transmitter or is laundering uh, money because it's like, you know what does the most money laundering in the world is or money transmitting for illicit purposes in the world is the US dollar. Uh, but obviously the governments, they don't, they're not huge fans of Bitcoin because it strips them of their power. And um, I, can, I can see why they would want to go after every possible thread they have to try and limit um, Bitcoin's uh, effectiveness uh, around the world. So. Mm -hmm. It, you know, it's unfortunate. I, I think it's to be expected. I obviously don't want these people to go to jail, these developers to go to jail, because they certainly weren't actually laundering money. Um, or at least these services weren't directly laundering money. I don't I don't want to see them go to jail, but I think, you know, this, this spooked a bunch of people uh, as far as the Bitcoin security, but I think I hope that the outcome here is that uh, Bitcoin developers, uh, people working on services on top of Bitcoin, uh, realize that being centralized, having a central point of failure, uh, is is not going to work, right? Like, if you start a service like this and you run the company that runs all the servers, like you are an easy target, like. All they have to do is come after you and your service goes down. Whereas if you had the service, um, you know, open source, totally decentralized and encouraged uh, and supported people who were going to run it on their own, then two things happen. You become less of a target because shutting you down doesn't really do anything. Um, and it also preserves the ability of this, you know, decentralized service to operate because you know, they can't really realistically shut down everyone, especially if they're in other parts of the world uh, where they don't necessarily have jurisdiction. So, you know, I hope, I hope that's the case that this serves, this motivates people to think a little bit more adversarial about this and how to decentralize things. Um, it's important to note that um, a lot of these services, they got shut down, like especially um, Phoenix Wallet are totally open source. So um, I think there's some people working on like, okay, cool. Well, we can just, you know, the source is still up on GitHub. Like you can go and check it out and download it and run it. So I, I hope that there's people who are more familiar with how these products work that are downloading them and like essentially packaging them up so that we can just keep running them um, that will be awesome, in absence yeah. of official company servers. So that's cool. That's, that's uh reassuring to hear that that these projects were indeed open source so i think there's i think not all is lost i mean it's kind of quite interesting i do remember a couple of months back ago there were there's a vp or there was a vpn provider uh, they they still do exist which i do think is based in the netherlands and uh, the policy or the police over there try to yeah get get into the data of this vpn provider and uh, the funny thing about this one was I'm, I'm certainly not remembering the name of this VPN provider, but it, it kind of falls into the same logic of what we do see here is they try to charge the people who are operating the service for doing something bad, 
and they try to get the data from their servers while they claim to have no data on their servers. And the funny thing turned out there was literally no data about their users on their server because they do not store anything. But nevertheless, um, yeah, having having this fact that I don't know a government is trying to arrest you and trying to sue you for something that you offered out of out of courtesy and just believing in the better world is kind of odd to me. I mean, it's definitely messed up. Um, you can see why they might want to do it mm. to preserve their control. So, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, don't don't paint a target on your back. Don't be a centralized um, place for for these things. Like, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate. I've talked to a couple of people the last couple of days who told me they totally rely on this coin join functionality, not not because they're doing some sort of illegal activity, just for the sake of they want to keep their privacy as high as possible. And now this service is gone and uh, they're sitting there, there's nothing in there. And I'm not sure, was it yesterday or was it today when uh, Jack Dorsey announces 21 million donation to uh, the open sets? Uh, I just saw it this morning. So it was either late yesterday or this morning. It, yeah, what, what I'm trying to make a point here is, so we do see there's a need for privacy, especially with cryptocurrencies, especially with the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, we, we do have a couple of other shit coins that are trying to actually achieve some sort of a privacy functionality. But having something that is reliable and is working on Bitcoin is, I do think, necessary, especially if people try to attempt to get Bitcoin, the Lightning Network, and any other th solutions that is built around Bitcoin out to the broader community. It's necessary to have some sort of a functionality. And seeing the governments trying to get rid of this and trying to get us into the same behavior as we're trying to exit here is is totally weird to me. I mean, we all, at least that's my hoping here, is try to make a better good out of everything. And we, we became or we get into Bitcoin because we do believe in a system that would work better without these centralized services. And uh, yeah, now we do see it's kind of hard to fight these big boys, but we need to get there. And that's the reason why I mentioned the, the, the 21 million donation here of Jack Dorsey, because he donated, yeah, as I said, a couple bucks over to the open sets. I'm not sure, is, is this some sort of a, what, what kind of company is open sets? There's a wording for this, I, I can't uh, imagine it currently. OpenSats is, it's called a 503C or 501C3 corporation in the United States. Basically, that means it's a nonprofit and that mm. allows people who are donating to it to write it off on their taxes. Um, so, for instance, Jack Dorsey can now write $5 million off of his taxes. So there's kind of a double incentive for people to donate to OpenSats. Um, Jack Dorsey, I think, has done the majority of the the uh, funding of Open Sats. I think he famously did like a couple million dollars. He did like one million dollars for Bitcoin and a million dollars for uh, Noster, and then a couple other things. And now he just like it was it was amazing. I don't know if who, for those who didn't see his tweet this morning, it was like he uh, he retweeted uh, Edward Snowden, who was saying Bitcoin needs privacy. And it was just a link to his like announcement that he is donating twenty one million dollars to Bitcoin development. So um, it's badass. I mean, we're we are uh, we're lucky to have uh, Jack Dorsey, who is so uh, basically who's so rich and so committed to Bitcoin. Uh, that's that's pretty awesome. Um, you know, drama aside of what he did with Twitter and things like that, uh, he's. He's putting his money where his mouth is and just making it happen. So that's that's pretty cool. I, I definitely can appreciate that. They also um, did uh, his company Block did their like letter to shareholders, which was basically titled "Why are we spending so much time on Bitcoin?" Because Block uh, traditionally is just like a um, like a typical credit card like payment processor. 
company and they make like terminals for restaurants and shops and stuff that do fiat things but they've kind of switched into doing a lot of bitcoin stuff and um i think a lot of people were like you know because they're a publicly traded company like why why are you doing so much bitcoin stuff like why don't you just do this credit card payment stuff and uh so anyways their whole letter to shareholders was like this is why we're spending so much time on bitcoin and they basically said that they have a uh, they invested like a hundred million dollars or hundred and fifty million dollars in no two hundred fifty million dollars and in, basically into bitcoin and uh it had like it had doubled so they're making a shit ton of money on uh on their bitcoin they um they they have a uh their cash app you can buy and sell bitcoin on there and so they they make money on those trades and uh yeah. I don't know. This is a huge aside, but anyways, Jack Dorsey's doing cool stuff. Open Sats is great, funding a lot of things. Um, I'm currently working on an open, or working under an Open Sats grant. So I was, I was awarded an Open Sats grant at the beginning of this year to work on Bitcoin, uh, to work on Bitax and Bitax development. So uh, I, I am personally grateful to, for that opportunity, and I guess. I would also encourage um, other people who want to work on BitAx or OSMU projects to uh, think about applying for an OSMU or for, sorry, or a um, OpenSats grant um, because, well, they just got they just got twenty one million more dollars to grant out like <laughs> today. Plenty so, of money, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think they're they're looking for open source projects that uh further bitcoin and you can a lot of the things we do here on osmu you can make a pretty strong case that it's open source and it furthers bitcoin so um if if anyone is considering something like this i'm happy to talk with you about the process and uh i would encourage you to uh do it it's pretty rad all right so Let's move on because uh, the time is moving on as well. I'd quickly love to Thanks. invite Ben onto the stage. Maybe he does have a little bit of time to come here on top. We do have something else that I do think you and maybe Ben want to kind of announce here for the bed eggs. Uh, ben, you want to announce it? Okay, Ben can't talk. I'll announce it. Um, oh shit, Ben, what's the size of the screen? <laughs> <laughs> this is a great announcement so far <laughs> yeah i'll go look it up uh, da, 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 da. i believe it's uh 1.96 isn't it or is it bigger nearly two inch screen um we, yeah then it's the 1.96 uh, okay awesome so yeah, uh, Ben's been doing a lot of work on this. Uh, MechFighter's also been doing a lot of work on this. Um, but as of like um, the Bidax Ultra 205, we have this thing called the Bidax Accessory Port. It's just a pin header on the top of the Bidax. Uh, this idea of having expandability on the Bidax for accessories was totally inspired by uh, uh, IMGPO Duncan, who's uh, the inventor of the Bit Halo. Um, he, you know, just blazed ahead and, uh, oh, okay, cool. Ben posted some pictures of it. Uh, I'll just say, uh, Duncan made the bit halo, which is the, probably the first accessory for the bit ax. And back when he made it, we didn't have this accessory port. So he, he just like tapped into test points and like totally hacked it, which is badass. But, uh, I felt like this is a great idea and we need to make this easier, um, Maybe Duncan can talk at some point about whether the, the BIDAC access report actually makes his life easier or not. I don't know. But anyways, this has inspired a actually a bounty um, to create this from a couple people in the community, which was to have a, an add-on board that has a display. And so this will this will replace the, um, the small um, monochromatic OLED that we have um, on the BIDAC now, and it's a much bigger... Uh, nearly two inch uh, full color LCD. It's actually the same one that the Nerd Miner uses. Um, so if you're familiar with the Nerd Miner, you know that it can look really cool and you can do some sweet graphics on it. 
And uh, that's exactly what has happened. And Ben made this cool case for it, uh, which you can see in the comments there, some screenshots of it. But yeah, this, this is gonna make the, uh, this is the, so it's a, a separate board that, that kind of clicks into the top of the bid ax. And then uh, Ben's got this sort of reference design case here, but um, yeah, it's gonna make the bid ax look super rad and we can do cool graphics on that screen and it can, you know, obviously this, the, the graphics don't exist yet, but um, can this be added to any bid ax with a BAP retro, retrospectively? Yes. Yes, it can. So it's, it, uh, it is designed to connect to the BAP and it uses the two top holes on the, um, the bit axe to mount. Yeah, Ben's got a picture of it there. I think we're gonna do another rev that changes the measurements slightly, but the whole goal here is that, yeah, this just clicks into any recent bit axe and it actually has another ESP32 on it. And so it, um, it will uh, contain firmware to do all the sweet graphics uh, on the display and it won't really um, bother the uh, the bit axe firmware much at all uh, is the goal here so yeah the bit axe display is uh, it's pretty dope <laughs> it looks really cool uh, Ben's got a picture there in the comments of it actually just running the nerd miner which is kind of funny you could do that if you wanted to um, and, yeah, I, I, do, uh, I do love it. I do love to see it. I mean, uh, we we had so many people not not really complaining, but asking for a bigger screen. Who wanted to, I don't know, put their own graphics on it or anything else. And now we do have the first or the second accessory, basically, that enables you to do that. It's it's just neat. And also the reference design that Ben just posted here in the comment section just looks beautiful. I mean, sure, it's three D printed. Maybe in the future it will be from another quality like uh, molded printing or what it is called um, injection molding injection molding there you go thanks but yeah I mean it, it's so neat it's so needed I believe and uh, it will also drive forward this wife approved section for your bid eggs so for those techies under here that may do have a bid eggs and you do feel like this is too nerdy maybe this gets it wife approved you know yeah, totally. And this is, it's cool because it's an accessory, right? So you, you, if you just want to get a bit X and you want to just pay the least amount possible for it, like that's, you can do that. You don't, you don't have to get this. So it's not built in. So it's a totally like, optional accessory. And, and you know, obviously it'll cost a little bit more because electronics cost money. But yeah, you can throw this on there and um, I hope to see some cool designs for, you know, the graphics on the display. Like there's lots of, you know, neat visualizations you could do, uh, showing, you know, current hash rate, you could show like stats about like the, the nerd miner does, you could show stats about the, um, the Bitcoin network itself. Uh, you could show history, you could show all kinds of cool things. And so this kind of starts to get us into that world of like, Oh, this is like a cool, um, conversation piece or something like, you know, you, can see, you have it on the shelf or on your table or whatever, and people see it and it's doing something cool. And you're like, whoa, what is that? And it's like, okay, cool. This is a bit axe. And I mean, the, the bit halo is also one of those types of things. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm super fired up to see these kinds of development on, on the bit axe. So yeah, it can dimension to see what else is brewing and what else people come up with. Right. Totally, totally. Yeah, th there's um, you know, like I said, there's a, there's a bunch of work to be done on the graphics for this, but hopefully we can we can rope more interested people in towards making improvements there. And um, I guess a little bit about how it technically works is this display has another ESP32 microcontroller on it. It's going to be, I think, the plan uh, so far is for that to be running the Arduino framework. So it's pretty easy to uh, to work with the firmware on the display. Like you can just get the Arduino IDE pretty easily. And there's a lot of tutorials and stuff online for how to do uh, programming with Arduino. And you can just upload it over the USB port and experiment around and prototype and, and test. And then there'll be a new BitAx firmware that um, has a, an API that communicates over the BitAx accessory port that lets you get 
things like the current hash rate and the temperature and, and all that good stuff from the miner itself. Um, and there's two buttons on it, so we could perhaps uh, send that back to the bit X if you need to change something, or the buttons could you know change the display in some way. That's neat. <laughs> I'd love to see it in action. Alrighty, I I need to express this. I, I don't want to cut off this topic, but I need to express this. Um, so these town halls are here for you guys. So whenever you do have any questions or if you want to ask anything, it doesn't matter what kind of topic it is, just ask it. This town hall is here for you. So don't hesitate, just ask. Maybe if you do want to come up on stage and talk a little bit, just raise your hand, I will bring you up on stage. This here is always for you and just to entertain you and give you a little bit of an overview of what has happened in the last couple of two weeks. Alrighty. Uh, do we have anything else? I mean, from, from my standpoint of view, like uh, I discussed, uh, discussed everything that I wanted to tell today, unless nobody else has anything to talk today, uh, we will end this in the next couple of minutes because we are almost sitting at one hour again. I do see a couple of people writing in the chat, so I will just give them a little bit of time. Awesome stuff, guys. Got a All right, Dagny, I'm good to have you here, man. Um, Lovely. I, I was going to, I was just, there's something on my mind this morning from some Twitter conversations, but there was, we get sort of, not many, but a non-zero amount of people kind of being like, oh, you know, the bid X, it doesn't have a chance, right? The hash rate's so low. Why don't you just get an S9 um, and run that? Hmm. And... So I was thinking about this a lot this morning, and I, I think what I, I just want to throw out there is that yes, like the ant, the S nine has a much higher hash rate; it's like thirteen terahash or something than the bit X. And so, if you feel um, technically capable of setting up an S nine, then you should absolutely do it. That will make a big effect in decentralizing the Bitcoin hash rate. Um, so absolutely do that. Like, I don't want to like discourage anyone from running an S9 or maybe you're, you're more adventurous and want to run an S19. Like you should do that. It's, it, that will make a significant difference. You know, where the, where the bid X comes in is the fact that not many people are doing this because those machines are difficult to run at home. Like they're, they're really, uh, loud, they're really expensive, and they're really hot, and they're tough to power because they're meant for industrial mining situations. And, you know, I think a lot of people, maybe these kind of backseat miners are just like, just looking at the hash rate and the price and being like, oh, just, just get a, you know, an S19. Like, what are you doing with this Bidax crap? And there's just a lot more that goes into running an S19. And I think that that's become very clear because not many people run them at home. Like some people do, but not many people do because they're just not meant for it. So I just want to throw that out there. You know, if you're talking with people and they're like, oh, you know, the bit X is just a toy. Like it's not going to make any change. I think that that's a little bit, uh, a little bit short sighted, right? We're not trying to go after the people who are capable of running ant miners, uh, at home, because if they can do that, they definitely should. Right, we're going after all the rest. And I contend that there are a lot of people in this, you know, the rest. Um, uh, you know, and there, there's a couple manufacturers, right? Like there's Apollo uh, from Futurebit, which is a fantastic machine. Um, he's sold a ton of those. Like, I don't know. I, I guess he, he, he said this publicly, so I can repeat it. But he, he said he sold 100,000 Apollo miners. Like, and they're, you know, a couple tera hash each, but they're like, $900, right? So that's like $90 million in sales, right? People are hungry for home mining. Oh, yeah. um, so, you know, like this isn't a small market. Like there's plenty to do here. There's plenty to go after. In fact, you know, I think I, I hope that, uh, I hope that uh, Apollo sells a million more because um, we can all sort of coexist here and this market is plenty big and all of these things go towards decentralizing the Bitcoin hash rate, which I think 
is a huge goal of mine because it's important for Bitcoin. Um, of course, I would like to see it open source because I think that's important as well. So if you're at all concerned about that, you should check out Open Source Miners United because uh, that's what we're all about. But yeah, th this is a big market. A lot of people can be successful here and I think people are hungry for home mining. So uh, the people here that are working on, on their own open source miners or working on Bidax or you know whatever it might be in this field, like like keep it up. There's plenty to do um, and plenty of interest. I think people are super, super hungry for this and they, they'll just, yeah, it's, it's pretty uh, massive potential here. Alrighty. Thanks for sharing that with us, Scott. I do think we don't have any other questions coming in here. So I'd quickly love to thank everybody for being here, to joining here. And I'd love to thank you, Scott, for being here today on the stage and yeah, entertaining the people with me here today. So thank you. Yeah, happy to entertain. Thanks for putting this together, man. This number 10, this is, this is for real. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. We, we're, trying, we're trying to make a difference. And uh, that's all Open System Minus United is about. So I'd love to talk to you again in two weeks, uh, hopefully. So a quick disclaimer, in two weeks I will be in Sweden, out in the wilderness. I'm not sure if I do have LTE over there, but I'll try my best to be here on stage and entertain you guys. So let's see how this works out. But uh, yeah, nevertheless, thanks guys for joining in here. Thanks for being here. And uh, I'd say see you next time.